Hi, I'm Mario Henriquez, and today we're going to continue to look at the transformations of parent functions. So, transformations are simply the numbers within the equation of a function that essentially make it different from the parent function. So, these numbers will actually help you visualize what the graph will look like without you having to plug in multiple points and eventually get a graph that you don't know why it kind of differed from the parent function. And at the end of the day, it'll really just make graphing easier. So the first graph we're going to look at is the square root function. So it's simply a half of a sideways parabola. The other half would be there, but you might know from your previous math classes that you can get a negative number out of a square root. So if it was there, it would simply just look like the full parabola, like this. However, it's not because you can't get a negative number. So, continuing on, we can see that if you plug in the numbers, you'll just get a square root of it. So, if you plug in 0, you get 0. Plug in 1, you get 1. And plug in 4, you get 2, etc. However, we can kind of go more in depth with this by looking at the transformations, which will kind of change the game itself. So here we have the different transformations of the parent function. So each letter kind of symbolizes a transformation. So we have A, we have H, and we have K. So essentially A is either the vertical stretch or the vertical compression. This will kind of deal with the slope of the graph. Since this is sideways, this will mean that the uh, graph will kind of stretch upward. You can see that the slope is kind of just increasing. So rather, this kind of goes with the idea that if it's greater than zero, greater than one, sorry, it will stretch. And if it is lower than one, it will compress. So let's see what would happen if we just looked at it in irregular sense so initially it would be right here at one however it, it is not because it's stretched and if it were to compress it would kind of be lower if it were like one half it would go right here so that kind of just goes to show that the slope increases when it stretches and it decreases when it compresses so the next transformation we're going to take a look at is the horizontal shift which is just simply a shift of the graph a couple units to the left or a couple units to the right. In this in this example right here, we're going to take a look at the 1 here. We also want to look at the positive sign because in this one you're actually going to do the opposite of what the number tells you. So if it's positive 1 here, we're actually going to move left 1 unit as you can see here. So we went to negative 1 because here you can see in the parent function's transformation that it is actually negative h. So whenever you're going to do your transformations and you look at the square root, if you see a positive sign, you're gonna move left, and if you're gonna if you see a negative sign, you're gonna move right. This is always always a number that is inside of the square root. So you're gonna see the x and you're gonna see the number with it. However, this number outside is the k value over here, which is going to be outside of the square root. So since this number is outside and we have a positive here, meaning you'll use the same number that it gives you. So since it's plus 2, you're going to go up 2 units. Here you can see that we went up 2. And we went left 1. So that's kind of the, all there is to it for the square root function. And also you can simply go back to your old-fashioned way of plugging in points and you'll actually get the same numbers just here this is just kind of another way of understanding why the graph does what it does so moving on we have the cubic function which is just simply a cube a, cu a cubed number so multiplying a number by itself three times so negative one times negative one times negative one would give you negative one zero times zero times zero zero 1 times 1 times 1, 1. However, that might get a bit confusing at times when you're trying to kind of deal with bigger numbers. So if you want to sketch the graph, 
you can simply look at the transformations. So here, once again, we can see the A, the H, and the K. This is going to be a common trend throughout all your functions. And once again, you can see that the H is always going to be inside the parentheses or kind of inside whatever it is, the absolute value, the square root, the cube root, whatever it is, it's going to be in there with the, with the K or with the X. So now let's take a look at how the transformations kind of differ or if there's any slight changes that we're going to see within the transformations for this graph than we have for the others. So let's start with the shifts this time because they're kind of simpler. Where we're just going to kind of pay attention to this center point where initially it would start at 0, comma 0, but here it's going to be different. So we can see that we moved left 1, as you learned from the negative h, because there's a positive 1, you're going to move left 1. So we moved left 1 unit, and we moved up 2 units. So that's the positive 2k and the negative 1h. So now let's look at the a because this is kind of going to be different than the sideways parabola you looked at last time. Since this is a vertical graph and you want to increase the slope, you are going to essentially crunch the graph. So we're going to look at it in this sense that it would initially be like this. Where it would continue on like that. Because... Now the slope is increasing, so you're kind of going through two boxes rather than that one box that you went through here. So that might have been a rough sketch, but I hope you understand kind of the idea of how you're increasing the slope or you have to crunch it when you have a vertical stretch in this case. And rather you'd have a vertical compression by doing something like that. So here we can see kind of if you plug in points you can also get to the same verdict that if you plugged in negative 2 let's say you plugged in negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 would be of course negative 1. So negative 1 to the third power is of negative 1 again and negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 and negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0 so that's where you get the negative 2 comma 0 point which is right here so essentially you'd have to do that with all the points if you wanted to get to your graph not all the points but a good amount of the points in order to kind of get a feel of what the graph looks like but with transformations of course this makes it much simpler So continuing on, we have the cube root function, which is basically just a sideways version of the cubic function. So this is kind of different from the square root in the sense that you can actually have a negative out of a cube root. Um, you can see that if you were to plug in negative 8, you would actually get 2 because negative 2 or you would get negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8 so now you kinda get the feel as to why there is actually a negative side on this one and there was none on the other graph so you can see that we have this part of the graph instead of not having this part over here that they didn't have on the on the parabola so now we have a kinda negative side of this graph which we didn't in the, in the square root so we can continue onward to the transformation of this one, which is going to be very similar to that of the cubic function. So here we have it, which is the cube root function transformations, where we have, once again, the good old transformations. So let's just take a look at how these numbers are affecting it. So the A is obviously making it wider or kind of increasing it 
in height, if you will, because once again, it's sideways, so it's trying to increase the slope rather than kind of compress it. So we have the positive one. Sorry, you. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but let's try to zoom in. So we move forward one unit because there was a negative one here. So we're going to move forward one and we're going to move up two. So let's just zoom in here again and kind of get a deeper understanding of this. So here we have the center point should be right here about there. So you can see that we move up two units and we move right one unit. So this is kind of a visual representation once again as to how the graph moves in this situation. So these are kind of some big numbers, but if you were to plug in negative 26 right here, minus 1, you would get negative 27. And the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 again. So when you have negative 3 here, you just multiply it by the 3 on the outside, and you get negative 9. And negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7, which is, once again, showing you the different points and how you get to them without really having to kind of plug them in because you can kind of visualize the graph how it'll look without plugging the points in. So lastly we have the absolute value. So kind of a little bit of a refresher. You may know this but plugging in 2 to an absolute value would give you 2 and plugging in negative 2 would give you positive 2 again. So this is the idea that you can't really have a negative number out of an absolute value. And another way to think about it would be as distance. So here, let's look at the visual here. You can see that moving left three units and moving right three units would still give you three units. So let's say you're running in, you're running to the right and he is running through the, to the left. Both of you are running the same distance if you're running three units each. So that's kind of the, the, the principle behind it like how far the number is from the starting point in the math it being zero so here we have the graph which is basically just a v as you can see it starts at zero and there are two slopes to the graph in this occasion there is this slope right here which is the positive one slope and here being the positive uh, the negative one slope so, as you can see, plugging in negative 1 would give you 1, because it's, you yield the positive every time, so negative 1, comma 1 here, and 1 would also give you 1, so right here. So, the transformations are somewhat simpler in this occasion. You have the A, the H, and the K again. So once again, with starting with the horizontal and vertical shifts, we're going to take a peek at the negative 2 here. We're going to move right 2 units. And we're going to move up 1 unit because of the positive 1k, of course. So essentially, it's just moving the origin from where it was at 0, 0 to the place where it is now. And in this occasion, we're again impacting the slope in the sense that it is a vertical stretch and the slope is just simply increasing because it is going from, instead of crossing right here, one box, you're crossing two boxes now. So it's kind of making the slope on this side two and on this side negative 2 because once again rise over run is kind of simpler to see in this graph because you're not going up two boxes and right one box so kind of get again this principle of rise over run
And yeah, so let's just plug in points and finish this one off, where we can get 1 minus 2 is negative 1, but out of it would obviously come a positive, and we would get negative 1 would come 1, and 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So we got 1 comma 3, and then we have 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 times 2 is 2. 0 and plus 1 is 1. So when you are plugging in, when when you are when you do get a 0 out of, out of an absolute value you, you do actually just come out with 0 because there is no positive or negative 0. And lastly we have 3 minus 2 is 1 since it's already positive it comes out and it's 1 times 2 2 plus 1 is 3. So there we have it we plot our points and once again, we solved it through both transforming it or through plugging in points. So I wish you guys luck on your assessments and group problems and hope this helped understand the idea of transformations with these more complex functions. Thank you.